Ken begins to fall from the sky, and he panics as he will surely not survive. However, just then, his body begins to glow with his healing magic. Ken finds the determination inside himself to survive no matter what, so he uses his healing magic to brace himself for the impact. <laughs> Ken can't believe that he survived, and he heals himself so he can do what Rose told him. He won't be able to go back until he does, so he tries to have a good attitude about it. He convinces himself that it shouldn't be too hard since it's only a 2 meter tall bear, but he is stunned when it appears behind him. This thing is way bigger than he thought, and even its claws are huge. Ken gets a bit confident that the bear won't be able to keep up with this speed, but he quickly finds out that it can. Ken reminds himself that he managed to survive the training from hell, and this little teddy bear is nothing compared to Rose. Ken surprisingly turns to face the bear, but Winnie the Pooh with rabies has back up. Ken runs for his life again because the bear's cowards are ganging up on him. And Ken hears a waterfall nearby and leaps into it to escape. The bears have no choice but to leave their prey, and Ken uses the time to regather himself. All he has are some rations, a canteen, and a knife. So he wishes Rose would have given him something he could at least start a fire with. Taking down a grand grizzly is starting to seem impossible at this point, but he will leave that depressing task for tomorrow. Ken is just glad to have survived the first day and sleeps in a pile of leaves. The next day, Ken begins to hunt and decides that he needs to learn more about his enemy. First, he needs to learn where it lives, and he finds some scratch marks on a tree. Just then, Ken prepares for the fight of his life as he hears rustling in some bushes, but it turns out to just be an innocent little bunny. It's actually a monster that looks like a rabbit, and it seems to be injured. Ken heals the thing up and acts like a bunny whisperer as he tells it to be more careful. Ken continues to hunt, but the bunny follows him. He tries to explain that he's searching for a dangerous monster, so it should leave, but the dumb little bunny doesn't listen. This thing just won't leave him alone, so he begins to wonder if the rabbit's trying to show him where the grand grizzly is. Ken follows the little guy, and it leads him right next to the bears. Ken plans to monitor them without being discovered and notices that they seem to be a family. Ken takes a break to get some unclean water that he's a bit skeptical of, and he's shocked to see that the bunny still hasn't left yet. He goes back to continue monitoring, and he's begun to think that the blue grizzlies are kind of cute. His bunny friend is pretty adorable too, so he begins to think that life in the forest is pretty good. That feeling wouldn't last long, however, as the water he drank had a severe effect on his stomach. His healing magic is taking forever to make him feel better, so he determines that he was basically poisoned by the water. A day later, Ken's trusty bunny friend shows him where some clean water is, and it's delicious. There's something wrong with Bugs Bunny, and it seems to be because a monster is approaching. Little Bunny wasn't even scared of the Grand Grizzly, so whatever is approaching must be really dangerous. A noise can be heard in the darkness, and Ken is shocked when a giant snake appears. He is terrified by this unbelievable monster and points out that there was nothing like it in the book he read. Even without knowing anything about it, Ken can tell that it's dangerous, and there's bloodlust oozing from every inch of it. When it leaves, Ken can finally breathe again, and he decides to make it a priority to avoid that thing. Four more days pass, but Ken can't shake the uneasy feeling he has. He has been observing the bears, but nothing has changed with them, and he can't go home without defeating the Grand Grizzly. Ken has to do it eventually, so he tells himself that he will do it tomorrow. The next day comes, but Little Rabbit doesn't want him to go. Ken gives in and decides to stay, but only until the rain stops. When it ends, Ken begins his mission and refuses to be stopped by Bunny. Ken readies himself for battle, but he is absolutely stunned when he finds that the lives of the bears have already been taken. The bite marks on the bears make it clear that the snake did it, but it didn't do it to eat. It took their lives for fun. The poor cub emerges from some rubble and tries to wake his mom up. 
Ken thinks about how much he hates losing, especially to Rose. On top of that, he hates the fact that his prey was stolen, as a little bear cries in agony. Ken states that what he hates worst of all is what he's looking at right now. He tells the cub to just wait right there, and he vows to get revenge for it. Ken's friends go to visit him, but they are shocked to hear he has been training in the forest for 10 straight days. They think that seems a bit too long to be training out there. But the guys explain that Rose makes all the decisions. Rose isn't there, so these useless guys have no clue what's going on. Kazuki is really worried about Ken, but Sujun thinks he should be fine since Rose wouldn't have sent him unless he was ready. On top of that, Sujun believes in Ken, and she is sure he will be back soon. Back in the forest, our boy fuels his body with some snacks and makes a spear. He asks his little bunny to take him to the snake, but make sure to instruct it to run away right after. The bunny takes him on a long journey through the forest, and the two finally find the snake. Unfortunately, it is attacking the little cub, and Ken is upset since he told it to stay home. This snake is absolutely terrifying to look at, but Ken insists that there's nothing scarier than Rose. Ken thinks the snake looks confused when he begins his attack, but it's not, and it almost eats him. <laughs> Ken counters with a stab to the eye, but he gets knocked back and must heal himself. Ken managed to blind it on one side, so he determines that it's a side he will have to attack from. This snake is insanely dangerous, and it quickly manages to bite down on our boy's arm. Ken's in immense pain, and he is shocked to realize that the snake baited him into attacking its blind spot. Ken is furious to have been tricked, but he reveals that the arm was holding his knife. Ken manages to heal his arm enough so that it can move, and he stabs the snake from inside its mouth. <laughs> Ken is somehow managing to hold his own, but things take a real bad turn as he realizes that he has been poisoned. This is a seriously unfair fight, as the snake is both huge and poisonous, but Ken has the advantage of being able to heal himself. Getting poisoned by the water forced him to learn how to heal himself from the inside out. Ken does just that and prepares to attack again. This snake is about to end his life with one tail swing, but the little cub steps in to help. These two have great teamwork right off the bat, as the bear lets Ken jump off its back so he can get on top of the snake. Ken uses some foul language to call the snake stupid, and he somehow manages to land an insanely powerful punch. Ken's determined to end the battle right now, so he jams the spear further into the snake's head. He yells out as he gives it everything he has, and the little bear helps out by pinning the snake down. The snake is eventually defeated. <laughs> and Ken can't believe that they actually did it. The bear seems to have taken a liking to Ken, and he points out how they got revenge. He would like to heal the little cub, but he is using up all his mana to neutralize the venom in his body, and he can't even move. That's really bad news, as he is shocked when the snake gets back up. Ken can't even move an inch, so the little cub tries to help him, but Ken just tells it to run away. The snake moves in to end his life, and Ken thinks about all the people in his life, he determines that this entire situation is all Rose's fault, and he yells out that she is a violent ogre. Just then, this violent ogre descends from the sky and shockingly stomps right on the snake. Her angry attitude causes her to call the snake an idiot. When Ken wonders how she knew to come help him, Rose reveals that the bunny named Kokoro told her Kokoro was her pet and she told him to watch over Ken. Ken explains that the rabbit showed up injured and looking for help, but Rose just points out that he is a sucker. Kokoro put on an act to gain his trust, and he fell for it. Rose was always nearby in case she needed to step in, but she planned to intervene as little as possible. However, 
she never thought that the giant snake would appear. This snake was created by the Demon Lord's army, and Sigles failed to finish it off during the last invasion. She never thought it would be able to defeat a Grand Grizzly, since they are strong enough to defeat a full unit of elite troops. Ken can't believe she wanted a rookie like him to take one out, and he thinks about how much of a monster she is. Rose explains that she actually never expected Ken to win, and the goal was for him to gain experience fighting something much stronger than him. Things started to get interesting with Ken, so she decided to let him keep going to see what would happen. Ken is quick to point out that he almost lost his life, and his little cub backs him up. It has clearly taken a liking to him, and Ken remembers that its parents aren't alive anymore, so it's all alone. Ken gets his new buddy to calm down, and Rose realizes that she was right. Ken's a lot like her. She angrily informs the bear that he will be coming with them, and he will carry the loser, who couldn't even lose his life properly. Ken wonders if the cub is really okay with everything, but this is one mature bear that's ready to go. They prepare to head back, but Ken can't help but think how terrifying Rose is as she carries him and the bear over her shoulder. Rose reveals that she heard what he said about her being an ogre. She then terrifies her boy as she explains that he won't be getting any sleep tonight. They head home, and Rose reveals that Ken actually passed the test with flying colors. Ken is surprised to hear that he is qualified for something, and Rose explains that he's now qualified to stand beside her on the battlefield. He still hasn't mastered the basics, but Ken definitely has what it takes. He has the ability to withstand pain, physical aptitude, and a strong mental state. The other two healers never earn that distinction, so she tells Ken that he should be proud. Ken wonders what she means when she says that they might be able to make it, and he is shocked when Rose reveals that the demon army will be attacking soon. Elsewhere, the demon lord wonders how preparations are going for the invasion of the lingering kingdom. Camilla, the commander of the third army, reports that their units have finished preparing for battle and will soon advance. I appreciate you viewing my anime, Unruly Family. Please let me know what you think about the third part of the wrong way to use healing magic by liking, sharing, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Oh,